And there we go. We have built our first bridge today. It was not the bridge I was intending to. Um, but we can now get across this river. And I'm sure there'll be plenty of other metal beams for us to go and use um, as we travel along. <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moldy Worm Gaming Channel. My name is Moldy Worm 41975 and today we are continuing our SnowRunner Let's Play. We made a video last week where we went and checked out one of the brand new mods that had come to this game. And in that video we actually discovered a brand new truck. And I've discovered that it is a brand new truck to the game. And that's why I had never seen it before. So we went and rescued it out of a... Um, field and today I want to go and use that truck to do a couple of missions because it is a pretty cool truck and here it is the Pacific P512 PF so it is under the Pacific brand like the Pacific P12 and P16 which are some of my favorite trucks in this game and we now have another Pacific truck in SnowRunner which is absolutely awesome so we need to go ahead and customize the thing so let's go and do that first and then I've got a couple of missions that I want to go and do with this thing in the new Wisconsin region so engine options we'll go ahead and stick in the Westline V12 M900 that is the most powerful engine we can get in here so we might as well do that the gearbox I think we're gonna go for the off-road gearbox that's going to give us a uh, low plus and low minus, which is going to be very useful. There is no suspension options for this thing, but you can see it is already raised very slightly. So I don't think we have too much of an issue with ground clearance. Tires, we can't change up the tires. We've only got these off-road tires, but it's better than nothing. So that'll do for now. The winch, we've got all the usual winch options. I think I'm going to go for the advanced medium. It gives us a bit longer rope length and it also gives us a bit more power because this is quite a heavy truck as well. So I think that's going to be quite important. We've got diff lock, we've got unlocked or we've got engageable. So you can have it permanently turned on or you can have it switchable. Um, I think we might just leave it permanently turned on because I feel like we might need to use it quite a bit with this truck so I'm gonna leave that the spare wheel options we can go for a spare wheel option which is very similar to what we can get on the other Pacific trucks uh, not really gonna bother with that for today the snorkel on here we can get the intake air filter and there's one of those on each side we can go for the Oh, all mods have been downloaded apparently. Uh, we can go for the twin tall wedge cap, which is kind of like these SnowRunner um, snorkels that you can get on a load of other trucks. Or oh, we've got the stock air filters. I think the stock just looks okay, so leave that on there. Then frame add-ons. We can go for the heavy crane. We can go for the log carrier front. So this also goes with the trailer. So you have the log carrier front and then you'll attach the log trailer and then you can carry logs around. We can also get the LP4 log loader crane. So this whole Wisconsin region is about logging. Um, I don't think we're going to be doing any logging today but we might do that in a, another episode. We've got the flatbed, we can go for the van body add-on which has been updated. Uh, for some reason it is now this yellow colour and it says service on the side so not sure what that's all about but there we go we can go for the maintenance frame add-on metal detector seismic vibrators the sideboard bed we can go for a fuel tank we got the normal loading crane and then we got saddle high and low I'm going to go for saddle low today because I think we're going to need a trailer later so put that on there then visual upgrades, um, we've got sun visors, so we can go for the angle sun visor with beacons or the stock sun visor. You can also remove it, but I think just the stock sun visor looks the best, so we'll leave that on there. 
front bumper options. We've got the hinged front bumper. We got the heavy duty pipe. We got the winch pipe, which is the Pacific P16, P12 looking one. We got the reinforced and then the stock. I'm going to go for the winch pipe because I like that it matches the other trucks. Looks really, really cool. Miscellaneous options. We've got the stock air conditioning unit on the top. Um, I'm going to remove that because I'm not a huge fan of that. We got the double raised beacons. We got the cabin protector, which is there on the back. We've got external horns, which is going to add those on the side of the bonnet there, on the side of the hood. Um, we can go for triple horns. We got the stock horns. We got roof LED lights, and then we've got these roof head. Uh, sorry, these LED head fog lights, which look a little bit strange. I usually go for fog lights, but on these bigger trucks, I don't think they look right, so I'm going to leave those off. Then exhaust options, we've got the heat shield, we've got the flat cap, we've got the muzzle, and we've got the stock. I think the stock ones look absolutely fine, so we'll leave those on there. We can't change up the rim options, but I'm happy with how they are. Then in the colour options we've got all the usual colours and then at the bottom we have some two-tone options. So we've got the blue and white that it comes with as standard. We've got red and yellow, looks a little bit strange. We've got the grey and orange, okay, that looks kind of cool. We've got the uh, red and white and then we've got the white with the green. Moldy Worm Gaming is green, and I really, really like the colour of this, so I'm going to go for that. And then we have got a few interior and exterior options. So we've checked out the interior customization in a previous video. It's not really that interesting, so I'm not going to bother with it, but we haven't really checked out the exterior options yet. So we've got some um, exterior stickers. These just go on the bonnet, and you can see there's quite a lot of different ones that you can go for here so I'll just run through them quickly so you can get an idea of what they're like um, but they look a little bit out of place to me they don't really look like they fit with the vehicle that well so I mean yeah and then we got windshield uh, stickers we can go for twin dragons on fire mud up or shut up and then we've got big and dirty which for some reason is in like Russian I think and then we've got hood ornaments as the last option. So we've got charging bull, we've got the bulldog, we've got a dolphin, we've got a striking cobra, and then we've got the saber tooth. Um, not really a fan of any of those. So I'm going to leave that. And there we go. That is our Pacific P512 fully customized. So now let's just run through what we're actually going to do today with this thing. So as we discovered in um, the last episode when we went and explored Greenwoods River, there's not many bridges built on this map. So a lot of the times you have to cross down here um, at this little island you can get across the river we did in the last episode. Or you either have to get through one of the two gateways. You can see there's one there on the left or one there on the right. And so depending on what side of the map you need to be on, um, you need to make sure you go through the right gateway. So I thought what we might do today is go ahead and build as many of the bridges as we can on this map because there is quite a few. So we've got the south bridge which is down here at the bottom, sort of near the bottom. And then we've got the north bridge which is just right here. And I believe there was one other bridge which I can't see at the moment. Um, but basically to do this we need to go and deconstruct some metal uh, buildings so we got some metal frame buildings over here but since we are at black badger lake at the moment there is quite a lot of metal constructions over there so i thought we'll get a trailer deconstruct those and see if we can go and construct these bridges and that's attached now before we continue i did want to show all of you the horn on this vehicle because 
the Pacific trucks have amazing horns and the P512 is no exception. So here we go. Ooh, that is a good horn. It sounds like a train, but it is a good horn. I really like that horn. So let's set off. We need to go and deconstruct some metal buildings and then take them over to uh, Greymoods River. Right, we've got our first little bit of mud. We've got um, no all-wheel drive and we've got no diff lock as it turns out. Um, I believe that it was not permanent diff lock. It was, uh, it was whether you want the diff lock or not and we didn't put that option on so we don't have any diff lock today it's going to make it a little bit more difficult but hopefully this thing should still be able to get through we have got that extended uh, winch on here and we have got off-road tires which are not the best mud tires would have been better but the off-road tires are not bad they will get you through quite a lot of uh, difficult terrain so yeah, we're struggling a little bit through this section. The truck we were in in the, in the last episode had no issues getting through here. So I'm not sure who decided to add this Pacific truck to the game. I don't know how many of these Pacific trucks that are in real life. I might have to do a little bit of research on that. But we have three of these Pacific trucks in the game. We've got the P12, the P16 and now the P512. And I have to say, this is probably the least capable out of the three. The P12 is probably the best of the three. It has all-wheel drive, it has diff locks, and it can have the saddle high and saddle low, so it is probably the best of the bunch, but I think the P16 is my favorite truck. This thing sort of seems, seems to leave you wanting more. Um, it would be nice if this thing had all-wheel drive. It does have diff lock. We didn't put it on, stupidly, um, but it is an upgradable feature, as you saw. But I think this thing could benefit from all-wheel drive. The P12 has it, so I don't get why this thing couldn't as well. Um, I mean, we are getting through these sort of mud bogs. We've got uh, quite a bad little bit here, and we've I've not had to use the winch yet. So uh, we are doing okay, but it would be nice if this thing had all-wheel drive. Would have just helped it a little bit. So we've just managed to actually clear this swamp. It's been quite a long uh, little trek here. I've been probably going about 20 minutes to get through that section. So not been too nice, but we have just arrived at our first metal deconstruction building, which is just right here. So let's go ahead and park in here. I don't know how much metal we're going to get from this thing, um, but I do know we need two metal beams which is what the what it seems to be so okay we've got two metal beams that's what we need for the first bridge and then we also need to get some service spare parts which i think we're going to get from um Greymoods river because there is some service parts on there but whilst we're here by the fuel station i'm just actually going to detach the trailer and uh, grab a bit of fuel because this thing doesn't have a massive fuel tank either it only holds 200 liters so um, fuel in this thing is kind of a concern we didn't really use too much getting through that section um, it doesn't seem that thirsty which is a good thing but it doesn't hold a lot of fuel either so i'm gonna have to kind of go sparingly with um, the fuel and make sure that we stick near some fuel stations so now that we've uncloaked the map we can actually see uh, where the fuel stations are which is quite nice but yeah I'll, I quite enjoy these new Wisconsin maps they are quite nice they're not too difficult but they're also uh, enough of a challenge to keep you interested so if you've bought the DLC maps and um, you're looking to have a bit of fun then check out the Wisconsin maps even if you haven't bought the DLC maps consider it because they are pretty cool and uh, also some of the other DLC maps are quite fun as well like the, uh, uh, the Canadian region I can't remember where it is the Yukon region that's what I was thinking of um, they're quite fun as well so maybe give those a check out I'd stay away from a Mandra until you uh, have a bit more experience though 
I wasn't planning on building this bridge, um, but we've just arrived here um, on this route that I was taking and the bridge is out. Now we need two more metal beams to construct the bridge so we can actually go across it. We've already got two metal beams on here, so I'm just going to go ahead and unload both of these. And there we go. We have built our first bridge today. It was not the bridge I was intending to. Um, but we can now get across this river. And I'm sure there'll be plenty of other metal beams for us to go and use. Um, as we travel along. Okay. There we go. Across the railway track. And we can go up the other side. Luckily because this is a railway. It's hard ground. So we've not got to cross a river or anything. If that had been a river... Then we would have been stuck but luckily it's a railway track so we can actually just get across it. it's a little bit cheaty but you know there is this path here so i guess that's what they kind of intended and there is a fuel station just here so i'm going to just fill up before we go to the gateway just in case and then uh, we're going to have to find some more metal beams once we get over there so i've just been having a quick look at the map we've just filled up here at this fuel station uh, the gateway is just here around the corner, so we're not that far away. But I have just located some metal framing just here. Uh, it's not too far from the gateway, so what I'm going to go and do is actually just go and grab that. And then we'll take that with us through the gateway to the first bridge. And here we are in Greenwoods River. We are back with the low rendered trees, apparently. Yeah, they still haven't fixed that which is kind of a bit annoying but anyway um yeah we're here in Greenwoods River this time we've popped out of the left tunnel um so we haven't really explored this left tunnel yet um in the previous episode we came through this tunnel and explored all of this so um I think we're going to go for the north bridge first which is just here because it's probably the easiest one to get to and you can see most of it is on the tarmac we go right past the garage in the rail production plant and uh, the north bridge is just right here so yeah let's just get on with it shall we all right we're at the bridge okay let's show the task we'll have a check of the details so yeah Deliver to the north bridge, which is where we are. Two metal beams. We have got those. We can get them from the steel, uh, the rolled steel factory, but not going to bother with that. And then we need some service spare parts, which we can get just from here at hangar A. Um, so that's just around the corner, which is good to know. Okay, stage one is complete. We have built the frame. And now we just need those service spare parts. I'm guessing to make like the planks that go across it. So I'm just going to go and grab those and we'll be back in a second. And here we go. We have got the service spare parts. So let's go ahead and unload these. Oops. We need to do cargo management. Unload those. And there we go. That is going to be the wooden planks and whatever else we need to build the bridge. And now let's drive across it. I always like driving across the bridges that we have just built. It's kind of a cool thing. And there you go. Because previously you couldn't access that part of the map. Well, you could access that part of the map, but you couldn't go across the bridge there. And now we have. So there we go. We've built that bridge. Um... We're going to go ahead and build the south bridge, and that's probably going to do it for the episode. So, um, if we came out of this gateway from Greenwoods River, there is some metal framing right here that we could use. And then we just need to go and get the service spare parts. So, I'm going to do that, and I'll meet you down by the south bridge to build our last and final bridge of the episode. And here we are at the South Bridge. It was quite a long trek, actually. It's taken me about an hour. Um, but I've gone and got the metal beams. Let's go ahead and show the task. We'll have a look at the details. So exactly the same as the North Bridge. Two metal beams and two service spare parts. Luckily, we are right near the service spare parts. So let's go ahead and unload this. 
and back out of here. We show the task, accept the task, start tracking the task. A lot of little things you got to do before you can actually just go ahead and unload the stuff. But there we go. That is half of the bridge built. I will go and grab the service fair parts now and then we'll finish the bridge. And here are the service spare parts. So let's go ahead and uh, unload those. Oops. No, we don't want to show task. We want to do cargo management. Unload both of those. And there we go. Beautiful. The bridge is built. There it is. It's open. We've got a little bit of money for it. Let's go ahead and drive across. And now we can actually access most of the map that we need to now um yeah let's go ahead and open the map now in the previous episode when we went and explored Greenwoods river we had to cross the river down here so you can see that the river basically runs all the way up the map it kind of snakes its way across and um that leaves you with a real problem because there isn't really any um bridges to get across here so we had to travel down this whole right hand side of the map to the log station and cross over this little island here which is possible um, so if you haven't built the bridges yet then that is how to get across but now we can simply just you know go across this bridge here at the steel rolled factory and then we can cross the bridge here and we are across to this side so it is nice that we have now got that option and um, we've used one of the new trucks as well, the Pacific P512. I've given my little opinion of it at the start of the video, but since I've been driving it a little bit more, I've got a few more things I want to say. Um, mainly is that it definitely needs all-wheel drive. Um, this thing needs an upgrade for all-wheel drive. It also could benefit from a few different tyre options, as I mentioned earlier. Um, but one thing I have noticed that is kind of a flaw with this truck is it seems very, very underpowered. A couple of times I was setting off on a hill like this and I'd have the trailer on the back with the metal beams on and it is quite a lot of weight, I will admit, but it just simply could not set off. I had to go down into low range and then switch it back into automatic to get the truck to move. And as you saw at the start of the video when we customised it, I did put the most powerful engine in it. So it shouldn't really have issues like that. So possibly some more engine upgrades would be nicer. Um, but it's a pretty nice truck. If you're not going to buy it to drive it, at least go and recover it to sell it. Because it does sell for like a hundred grand, which is quite a lot in this game. And you could go and buy a better truck with it. So... That's my opinion on the P512. It is a nice addition to the game, but I think it needs a few more upgrades to make this thing truly awesome. But that's going to do it for the video today. We built three bridges in the new Wisconsin region. It's been quite a hectic video, actually. A lot of it's been cut out for you watching, but it's been about a three-hour video for me making it. So if you did enjoy then uh, leave a like on the video, leave us a comment and let us know who's watching and if you are new to the channel and you want to subscribe we're trying to reach a thousand subs so it would be greatly appreciated if you want to do that. That's going to do it for the video though, thanks all so much for watching, I hope you did enjoy and I will see you in the next video.